All right, we've got our creature. We've got kind of a simplified landscape where we understand all the components. It's nice to understand the components because sometimes we can see elements more clearly this way. Like there's a little piece of parsley I can get rid of there. And we've got our creature posed and angled into it. We have not changed much about them. I just started doing adjustments, so levels and color balance. Now I could play with saturation if needed. Oops, I'm on the wrong thing. And of course you could always play with adjustments of your environment as well because they could be made to match each other if that's what's needed. But I'm just gonna just shift the hue to one side or the other and see if one's stronger than the other or if zero is where I wanna be. And it seems like, yeah, being on the positive side helps a little bit. I can also amp up the saturation a little bit or take it down. And it seems like my landscape's a little bit more saturated than my creature, so I might up just the intensity of the color just a little bit. Okay, now, how do I match the angle of lighting? Because that's not happening yet. These are all like fast food images, so they're all lit by studio lights, lit from above. And so if he's going to be lit from above and catching these highlights, he's going to have a pretty strong shadow underneath him. So that's one clear way we can work on lighting. So I'm going to show you a nice trick. We're going to go to the very top visible layer. I just have my smart object above that, but it's turned off. And I'm going to create a new layer on top of that. And then I'm going to say edit fill. And I'm going to fill the entire layer with gray, with what's called middle gray at 100% normal mode. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the blending mode, the layer blending mode, from normal to overlay. And if you turn that layer on and off, it will do absolutely nothing. Because overlay at middle gray makes no difference. But now if I use dodge and burn, so just to make a quick cast shadow, I can use burn, the burn tool. I can use my tablet or not. If I use my tablet, I'm going to use it pressure sensitive. And I like, I like to use dodge and burn like I use my eraser when I blend. I take its strength down less than 30. And I use it with a really fairly large, like a few hundred pixels, 0% hardness brush. And now I'm going to burn on that gray layer. Now this is what it actually did. If I take that from overlay mode to normal mode, I am burning on that gray. But because it's overlay mode, you can see that it has an effect on all the pixels around it or underneath it. So, that doesn't quite look like a cast shadow though, because all burn can do is affect the midtones when it's on a non-destructive layer. But it's a good start. That darkened my feet. I can also use it to burn on my creature a little bit, like on the underside, because he's mostly being lit from above. Now, why I like this, this is called a non-destructive overlay layer, is because you can dodge and burn, and adjust it and erase from it and play with the opacity of it without ever affecting the pixels of your actual creature layer or of your landscape. And if it ever gets too strong, you can always just take the opacity down or erase away from it, kind of like a clone stamp layer. Now, sometimes we want to be able to dodge and burn the creature separately from the environment. But before I do that, let me make a cast shadow in a different way that I think works pretty well. I'm going to do the exact same thing, 
but I'm going to first, instead of filling a whole layer, I'm going to make a new layer, and then I'm going to use my lasso and draw what I think the cast shadow would be. Just to show kind of lighting from above, it's just kind of a blob shape. Then I'm going to fill that blob shape on this new layer with gray. 100%, just like that. Now instead of, I'm going to deselect. Now instead of normal mode, I'm going to try multiply mode. Okay. Now, in order to get rid of those hard edges, I'm going to use my eraser. Well, I can do a few things. I can do filter and blur, and then go to Gaussian blur and use this to soften it. And you can soften it quite a bit and it will soften from the center as it pulls away from the creature, which is how cast shadows work. Or you can keep it fairly crisp. That depends on how, how close the light source is to your creature. Mine seems pretty far away, so I'm gonna soften it quite a bit. What does that look like on its own? If I just put it to normal mode, now it's like a soft cloud of gray. On multiply mode. Now I can play with the opacity of both of those. Until that cast shadow seems more believable. And then I can use my soft edged eraser at low opacity. To refine it a little bit. I can maybe show a little bit the difference. Now if I want to make it darker I can just duplicate it and then play with that opacity. You can try not multiply, you can try some other blending modes too. Like linear burn is a pretty helpful one and then erase it out where you think it's too strong. It's always good to kind of squint. What's nice about doing it this way is you're not affecting the pixels of your landscape. Right? Because when you burn a landscape, it also can change the color. But when you do it on non-destructive layers with overlays in different blending modes, it's, uh, it's not gonna saturate or desaturate your colors. So Gaussian Blur is the only filter we'll reliably use because the computer is very good at taking away information, you know, at softening edges. So you find it under Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. We'll play with filters later, but Gaussian Blur is just a really helpful everyday tool. So now I can use that, that same overall layer. I'm going to erase out a little bit from it the overlay, and I can dodge and burn in other places too to help my composition. So maybe on these french fries, can burn them a little bit in the foreground. Maybe around the base of my duck here, maybe in the background. Help separate things. This is all just mid-tones. So these non-destructive overlay layers, very, very helpful. I'm actually gonna cut away a little bit of this french fry, it's bugging me. It's a lot like working on a painting or something, you're gonna see little things you can fix. It just help the overall composition. Okay, next, I've got quite a bit of contrast there. And now the feet are really clearly shadowed, but they don't really feel like they're on this surface because there's no weight to it. So this is using internal compositing. I want to find the layer that they're on, which is this, this fried duck. And then I'm going to actually grab with my lasso chunks of it 
that overlap with the feet. Just subtly, because I want to show that the weight of this creature is pushing down into the duck skin. So I've lassoed that. Now I'm going to duplicate it from the duck layer. So Command J. And then I'm going to move those up above my creature, right? And then down beneath my shadows. And now it looks like they just buried their, like the duck was sand, they just buried their feet in the sand. So what do I do? I use my eraser again, but this time at full opacity. And this time more targeted and smaller. With maybe a little bit of hardness. And I can also take down the opacity on that, that layer. And I decide how indented the weight of this creature feet impacts the duck skin. And it kind of softens its edge too. I can even give this creature a little bit more shapely toes than it actually has. And that's going to help integrate it into this environment a little bit. And again, it's not destroying my, I'm not erasing away from my creature's layer at all. I made a new composite layer of the stuff in front of the feet. So this is at 100%. And I'm going to take its opacity down a little bit. So that helps kind of make the shadow around the indents make sense. And I can also burn it a little bit. I think I will with the burn tool. Now, most of the weight's at these front feet because they're so much more massive at the front. Let's see, burn. It's always a good time to save when it's not uh, reacting directly to you. It updates, and then I can continue. So now I'm not burning my creature. I'm burning the the little dents that it's making in the duck around it. So this is without it, this is with it. And you see how that helps kind of set the feet weighing into it a little bit. Now you're gonna have different circumstances for your creature. How do you make it work in that environment? I'm going to try duplicating that cast shadow again because it just doesn't seem dark enough. Because there's a lot of light on that duck. So now that's starting to be more believable. And I can erase it out where it's overlapping my creature's legs so the feet just don't keep getting darker and darker and darker. all these duplicates of the shadow. We have a lot of control here. And then I can merge all these shadow layers together. Just Command E, and then set them on multiply or linear burn and then play with their opacity just in one place.
who's just loved 